Hi and welcome to the exciting world of diesel heaters. Now anyone that knows us knows if you like that we go pretty much where places are not really looking like this. Uh, we're getting into autumn in the UK and um, we're actually fitting a diesel heater. Now I guess we're really not going to be using it too much but we are we're going to be in Morocco when we're up in the mountains when we're in the desert when we're on the tours etc now we've got a vehicle which we can live inside it's going to make all the difference to us sleeping in here with a little heater running in the background now first of all let's give you the reasons why we go for a diesel heater as opposed to say making a campfire now People that know me know that I'm no eco-warrior at the end of the day. Here comes the but. The but is, is we could go around collecting wood and be kind of bushcrafty and sit around a real fire, which is great. Love it. Sit around a real fire, nothing like it. Real caveman stuff. Absolutely brilliant. Keeps you nice and warm when you're on the outside, etc. But we've been inside the roof tent before now. It's been minus four and there's been ice on the inside. It's been that cold. So, getting a little bit older, that we treat ourselves to a diesel heater. Now, another reason why we don't go around collecting wood is because it's a pain in the ass to store. Um, but the main reason is, is that we have seen complete devastation of, of places. Um, everything from huge vats of charcoal being made within Africa and other country, other continents as well. Um, and then just, you can see the devastation that's going on. You, you could be on the side of the River Niger and you could be on, say, on this side and on the other side, and you're surrounded by trees, really quite nice. On the other side, it's desert for about half a kilometer because the trees have been cut down. And uh, the reason they've obviously been cut down is, is because the people that live there don't have access to stuff like we do. It's quite obvious. They don't have gas piped into their house. They might even not have access to getting gas bottles or even if they do they might not be able to afford it so what do they do they're going to cut down trees and you can't blame them for this at the end of the day they need to survive they need to be able to cook and they also need to be able to keep warm you know on those cold nights or even cold days etc problem is is that a lot of these places are being devastated and you'll see them on the sides of the road you'll, you'll drive along and all of a sudden there'll be just piles of wood and people selling these piles of wood which, you know, again, all you're doing, if you're going to buy piles of wood and you think it's very romantic to go around building fires and cooking off of campfires, great. But in reality, when you're traveling long term, it's not great. You're just adding to the problem. Like I say, I'm no eco warrior, but I mean, you've only got to watch this crap going on. Go to Casamos, go to Casamos in Senegal. If you go to that region there, there have been gang murders over firewood. Bloody firewood at the end of the day which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, we've got a delivery again turning up, but it's nothing to do with us at the end of the day, so we kind of ignore that. Um, so yeah, so we don't, we don't go around building fires. This is simply as that. What we do do is buy a gas bottle, or we have diesel. And that's what we're going to use at the end of the day. Now you can get gas systems, gas heating systems, but I've looked into them, and you need a bottle probably about the size of this opening if you like to keep those things running for a period of time over the course of days diesel tap straight into your main tank and then uses probably just less than a liter a night depending on how cold it is now how many times you've got it switching on and off anyway enough of that let's have a look at these wonderful machines i suppose which i'm halfway through fitting so here we go this is basically it okay now what that is, is a planar unit. Now planar is just one of the makes. There are other makes. Now the other ones are more expensive. You've got a spatula and you've got a basco. But if you know your diesel heaters, like you know your onions, you'll realize that that diesel heater there is pretty much the same. And it's a pretty much, if you like, a, a Russian copy of what is a rabasco or what is in a spatula difference being is they're a lot cheaper. They're not as cheap as the Chinese ones, but I don't want to risk buying a Chinese one for 120 quid. So it's going now, it's starting off. So the Chinese one's 120 quid, the Basco Spatcher, they're about a thousand pound mark, depending. 
This one here, six to seven hundred pounds. Now, reliability wise, if you look up online, they're fantastic. The planars are really, really good. Now, six to seven hundred pounds, still you're thinking, ooh, that's a lot of money. Go on eBay. There's a guy on eBay who's actually selling these, and he, I'm kind of guessing, he's bringing them into the UK, good luck after Brexit, but he's bringing them into the UK, and he's selling them for half the price. That thing there I got on eBay, which is a genuine item, for 300 quid. So, Autotherm is the company that brings them in, so you don't necessarily have to go to Autotherm, go on eBay, put Planar in, and you'll find one of these two kilowatt jobbies at the end of the day. I'm not going to go into how we install it because that's pretty straightforward. You do actually get a little booklet which tells you how to do it. So, you know, you have to be a complete numbnut not to understand that. Or you go on YouTube. Loads of videos on how to install these. So loads of videos about Chinese ones versus German ones versus Russian ones, etc. and everything else. So you can make your own mind up for that. So there's, there's no installation going on, etc. I'll just show you what we've done for this vehicle. Now, here we come back. That is your air inlet. So that's your air inlet. And if you come around on the other side, by the magic of TV, all 70 series normally have this, and then they have a little kind of air venty thing and it, ah, whatever it is. Normally just lets dust in, to be perfectly honest with you. So we've made this up with the air inlet tube. And what'll happen is, is there'll be another plate over the top, aluminium, with some nice slots in it, and there'll be some, if you like, um, air filter material, which you can then take off with some rivet nuts, the plate, and then you can put the, get the material, brush it out, clean it out, wash it out, depending on what you're gonna put in there at the end of the day, and that's our air inlet. People will say, oh, you spoiled the look of it. Don't care, form over function at the end of the day. It's gotta work, and I want it working good. <coughs> Exhaust, exhaust, we'll be going on to the end of that as well. This is a nice bit of, uh, well, hopefully it's a nice bit and the cars aren't going to catch fire, but that's um, obviously to keep the heat because this exhaust gets really, really hot. So that'll be exiting out here and underneath as well. So there's your exhaust. And just to make it go faster, there's a sports uh, silencer as well. Obviously just kidding. Various ways you can do this, you can get a separate little petrol, not petrol, diesel um, tank uh, which you can fit anywhere and then you just basically plumb it into this fuel pump. Yep. Uh, apparently these make a bit of a clicking noise when they're running, so you get this kind of click, 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 which people don't like. Now we're going to mount this as an, in an IP box underneath the car out the way so we're not going to really hear anything at all to be perfectly honest with you and like I say I'm going to plumb directly into the main fuel tank I'm not going to have a separate little tank 5 litre tank 10 litre tank which I'm going to be drawing diesel from fire this into that to when it fires up pretty much it they're very straightforward very very easy apart from one thing come and have a look at this Crane your neck round. You'll see here, we've got one outlet. It's, it's a car. It's not really gonna be taking too much uh, to heat up. So obviously, this twists around, etc. So all your hot air boom, comes out of here. This is your controller up here. So you can turn it up and down, put the fan on, start it up, that kind of jazz as well. Again, pretty much brought everything up inside here and uh, cut it out, fit it in to make it look nice and neat. Wiring obviously all goes off to the battery box at the other end, not gonna bore you with all that either. So, that's our reason for having a diesel heater. Hopefully we're gonna get to use it, and I think we will use it as well, because Heike doesn't like being cold at the best of times. Um, so thanks for watching, and um, don't forget, don't go around cutting trees down, don't go around collecting wood. Pure and simply because you're taking wood away from some poor bugger who's got some little hut down there who's trying to feed and cook and heat for his family, yeah? And you're taking it for fun? Not a good idea. Get yourself a diesel heater or any other type. I'll just buy 
two more woolly jumpers and a big coat and then you're good to go. Thanks for watching and um, look out for the next videos of which I will be doing if you like the troopies nearly finished so I'm going to go all over the troopy. it'll be a very long and laborious video hopefully not too laborious we'll show you exactly what we've done and I'm also going to have a little surprise at the end of all these troopy build videos what we're going to do is um, the guy that sold it to me actually left the original receipt of how much he paid for it and um, I don't mind I don't mind actually showing you that how much he paid to showing you how much I paid and telling you how much this all cost and I'll give you my reasons why I think it's either good bad indifferent whatever but you'll get the full gen at the end of all of this so keep watching and um, hopefully see you soon take care bye bye